What's up, my stable? Today we are talking about Transformers War for Cybertron. Autobots are fighting Decepticons. Megatron has very thick lips. And of course, some other robots have hips. Hey, you guys like my uh, singing intro? The remix for the Transformers theme. <laughs> but those lips are thick, bro. Let's let's not. Megatron's lips are thick. Yo, Megatron's lips can actually twerk. That's how thick these lips are. <laughs> it's like, I mean, come on. It's like, it's like, dun, 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 dun. Megatron's lips are thick and he cannot lie. It's very hard to deny. <laughs> okay, this is turning into like a musical review, and that's not what I planned for. But my brain just everywhere. Anyway, yeah, so, this is a six-part episode, this is like Netflix part one, I'm guessing, like, yeah, it's part one, so there's gonna be three parts, uh, we got the Transformers, there's no gratuitous butt shots, <laughs> or random explosions, you know what I'm saying, you know, you know, there's no Bayos, or Bayhem, as they call it, and I'm guessing for a lot of Transformers, that's why a lot, I think that's a part of the reason why it's getting such a high, 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 like, review. Which is, which is kind of strange, because Transformers Prime came out not too long ago as well. That was, that was, I want to say 2012 as well. And that was a fantastic series. Like, that's, I think, my favorite Transformers media. Because, like, I grew up with Transformers, but, like, in the ethos of Transformers. Because here in South Africa... We got like older cartoons, so I got to see some of the 80s of Transformers. That's where I first saw Bumblebee and I saw Jetfire. I, yeah, I saw Wheeljack and I saw uh, Jetfire. That's also where I saw Jetfire. That was the first time I saw Jetfire. So yeah, those were the those are the robots that stuck in my mind. So yeah, I didn't, I wasn't like deep, deep, deep into Transformers, but I knew of Transformers as well. And then there was the 2006 series, I think it was an animated series. It didn't run for long. If I'm, um, correct me if I'm mistaken, it didn't run for long, but it wasn't the, uh, it wasn't Beast Wars. It wasn't Beast Wars. It was something else. And then I saw some of Beast Wars as well. So I've always known of Transformers and I've always liked Transformers, but I never, like, it's only recently where I'm starting to learn about all the lore of Transformers. Which is why this this uh, series or part or siege or whatever you want to call it, uh, Transformers <laughs> War for Tri Cybertron Siege thing, this, this show was a very nice refresher for me on what the Transformers are about. Because, yeah, that's the thing. I had always known of Transformers. I had always known of the War for Cybertron. But I never really saw it. I even tried to, like, track it down in comic books. Because I started reading Transformers comic books. The IDW comic books, which are really good. But I never got to see, like, the Genesis. Like, sometimes I saw Orion Pax. Sometimes I saw Megatron in the mind slaving away. And I never got to know the genesis of those characters. So, I mean, we still don't get to really, really know. But, you know, you get, you're get in the middle of the war. But you're still learning about the characters as it progresses. Which I personally like. Bumblebee, we, we learned that Bumblebee is not a is not an Autobot, not a Decepticon, he's not an Autobot yet. I mean, he's, his character goes through a kind of arc. And I think the way that it happens with him, I liked how they introduced him, but I just thought that the resolution for his arc was a little quick for me. Like, there's some things in here that are a bit too fast, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you, you could have extended this to one more episode just to have a little bit longer conflict with that, with that character. But I really do like how they introduce the character, how the character progresses, and how the character eventually obviously joins the Autobot because Bumblebee is a huge member in the Autobots. So that's a, yeah, that's a thing. Another thing that I noticed is that they don't have inbuilt weapons. And for me, that's always been a strange thing. Like, they carry guns. And I was like, wait, but I'm always used to the Autobot arms doing the shooting and, and, and those types of things. So that was really, really strange. But if you look at the 80s cartoon, that's kind of what they did as well. That, no, that's exactly what they did, is that everybody was holding rifles and, and plasma rifles and all of that stuff. So, yeah. Um, and then that's the other thing that I learned as I, you know, dug into this series to get prepped for this review and dug into, like, old Transformers media and stuff. Optimus dying is a thing. <laughs> like, 
Like, what? what is this? Like, Optimus dying is a thing. I really didn't know about it. Like, I saw it in Transformers Prime and I cried. Spoilers for Transformers Prime. You know what? It's your own fault. It's your own fault. But, like, I, this thing of Optimus actually biting the dust is a thing in Transformers media. And I was like, what, what, he's the cool, huh? He's my favorite. <laughs> Man, that was traumatic. Oh, I oh, I cried. I cried for real. He was my favorite. <laughs> so I, I don't know how that's gonna play out in this. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that's not gonna happen. That can't happen because this is the genesis of the whole Transformers lore, right? So another thing I really liked about this series is that you learn that these are factions. You learn that these are, it's not like it's good robots versus bad robots. You learn that they are robots who are in the middle. You learn that they are robots who care about the goodness of like the survival of Cybertron within both camps. And they're just like, if this war is going to wipe us all out, do we really need to have it? We, like, there's one character in here. I'm not even going to say his name or whatever. Y'all will see him. He's, he's so recognizable. And what they do with him, I was just like, God. God damn. <laughs> that, was, that was not right. Y'all did him dirty. That was... That, no. Come. And he's like one of the most recognizable names in Transformers. And I was just like... Okay, I guess in this continuity he doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, so you learn that there are Autobots who don't agree with Optimus. You learn that there are Decepticons who don't agree with Megatron. You learn that it, it really becomes a question of what are you willing to do to win a war. Which has is, is, is always been an interesting concept to me because, first off, not a fan of war at all in the slightest. I probably would... I would never... I would, I would never, like, especially if you're, like, the invading force or whatever. Like, civil wars, again, you know, in, throughout history and depending on what context of that history because there are some civil wars that were complete nonsense. But the point is, is that, like, I like how this series is an allegory of war. What are you willing to do to win? Like, what monster are you willing to become? Because, like, Megatron makes decisions where you're just like, that was kind of foul. That was kind of foul. And even some of the, even some of the Decepticons are like, I know we Decepticons, like, we deceive. But, yeah, that, that was rough, man. <laughs> nah, that was... And then there are Autobots that look at Optimus and they're just like, Bro, we, like, you, you see what's happening around here? And you still, like, every time you and Megatron meet, he just boxes you to the ground and, and you still think we gonna win, like... Like, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I don't do, why are we doing that? <laughs> like, you know, y'all can negotiate. Something can happen with this war. Speaking of Megatron and his thick lips, if you guys know Megatron from whatever iteration he's in, this, this fool tripping. This fool tripping half the time. Jeez, Louise Catrice. So yeah, Megatron is very much, he's not fully Megatron in this series, but you get towards like the end of the episode, you get like in the middle of the stuff, you're like, okay, Megatron, so Megatron is Megatron. <laughs> Megatron is Megatroning all around the place. And speaking of which, we get some Starscream, classic Starscream, where he just be like, yo, you know, Megatron tripping, Megatron don't know what he doing, Megatron going to destroy all the, oh, hey, Megatron, hey, man, I didn't see you there. Oh, you, you know, that arm cannon is looking really good. Man, are you doing something? Are you on a new type of Energon? Your, your, your metal is looking luxurious right now. Ooh, I gotta do what you doing, man. Are you using a different oil? What, what, what's happening? What's happening? Man, Starscream, dude, definition of a two-faced friend. I was like, how does anyone trust this dude? Like, he flip-flopping. Like, he he flip-flopped more than a pancake. <laughs> Starscream. He's like, now I will take a Like, bro, dude. Huh? 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 Like, the other thing is, like, how would you go from Megatron to Starscream. How? Like, 
Dude, at least Megatron intimidated. Megatron looked like he smacked the he smacked the mess out of Autobots and all of that stuff. Starscream, dude, Starscream, Starscream looked like he get picked on on, uh, on the schoolyard. <laughs> like like Starscream, Starscream was the like I, I I wouldn't trust Starscream. That's just my opinion. And well, I mean of course because I know Starscream, but I'm just saying if we were in the army together, I'm shooting him right off bat. I'm like, nope, I don't trust. It's in his face and his voice. I don't trust this dude. So yeah, those classic elements are in this series as well, if you love those type of things. So yeah, nobody's perfect, nobody's painted in 100% light, nobody's 100% good, nobody's 100% evil. Well, I mean, Megatron is becoming 100% evil because this is the genesis of Megatron. But yeah, um, I do like those little interplays and all of that stuff. We get to the action, and the action was good. The action was, I, I liked some of the action, but again, I'm, I'm more of a, I like the kinetic. Like, this was very, this was very soldiery. This was very reminiscent of the 1980s series and movie where they were all, like, crouched behind walls, and, you know, they'd be taking shots, and they'd be shooting people, and they'd be throwing grenades and stuff. So I'm more of a fan of, like, not not to the extreme of Michael Bay, because that just looks like two junkyards crashing into each other. I mean, I know people have heard that all the time, but literally, it looks like junk, it looks like junkyard tsunamis just crashing into each other when those robots fight in those movies. But yeah, for 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 me, um, I thought the action was just slightly lacking. Uh, it did pick up towards the end and stuff. But again, I'm like a fan of Transformers Cyber uh, Cybertron, <laughs> Transformers Prime. So in Transformers Prime, you were getting heavy action all the time. It was very kinetic. The the robots would be moving around, slashing and everything, and they'd be you know punching each other like full on like there's a fight in there with megatron and optimus and i was just like the whole time i was watching it like it was a real boxing match i was like yo optimus man you gotta get up bro come on come on left left slip 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 get down get down get down keep your guard up fam. keep your guard oh that yes that's right that's right that's right go to the body go to the body go to the body <laughs> But yeah, this was very, but I mean, it makes sense if we're talking about it in terms of people be, being soldiers. They're not just going to run up and box each other. If they've got guns and, you know, like, well, well, Megatron has an arm cannon, which I personally think is unfair. But anyway, point is, is that, you know, if it's bullets and all of that stuff, you're not going to fight somebody hand to hand in a war. And you know what I'm saying? You're going to be shooting at each other. So I, I get that in that aspect. It makes sense. I just wanted more bombastic you know, more kinetic, more action, in my opinion. Not that the action is bad, I just think it was not enough for me. Yeah, all in all, I, I did like this series. I did dig it, and I did binge it just like that, and, you know, a lot of the story pieces fit in place. You know what I'm saying? And you get to see that Optimus is not this calm and coll collected, collected, <laughs> this calm and collected, 100% you know, stoic leader. He has breaking moments. He has moments of frustration. He has moments where he doesn't understand. And that was also interesting to see to me. Now, it's not Peter Cullen and... Um, why am I forgetting the Megatron voice actor? Because I'm thinking Hugo Weaving, but Hugo Weaving was the movies. So it's not Hugo Weaving... Why am I forgetting his name? Anyway, uh, just let me know in the comment section down below who plays Megatron's voice again. I'm really sorry. I... You know, I knew of Peter Cullen because of the movies and Transformers Prime, but I, I can't remember who plays Megatron. But anyway, they don't have the original voice cast for this one, but I thought that the people who were doing the voices did a pretty excellent job. And I liked, I liked that um, Optimus Prime's voice was a little bit more raw than normal because it was like... He's like he's just becoming the optimist that we know. You know what I'm saying? Like Megatron, I think Megatron is kind of solidified in who he is in this arc, but Optimus is still trying to find himself within this war as a leader. So Transformers: War for Cybertron Siege is Meister Masterful.
Yeah, Meister Master Fool. That's what I would give. Yeah, it's really good. It's really good. It's not fan fantastic, but it's a really good series. And if you're a Transformers fan of any kind, if you're interested in Transformers, or if you're an OG Transformers fan who knows everything, I think this would be for you. This I personally enjoyed it, and the more I get into the lore, the more I be a fan. So. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed this series. So, did you guys watch it? Did you guys binge it? Did, did you guys know of Transformers? And who is your favorite Transformer? Comment those two things below. Please, no spoilers. I tried to keep this pretty vague as to what happened, so no spoilers for this. No spoilers in the comment section. But yeah, just comment if you watched the series, if you enjoyed the series, and who is your favorite Transformer. Mine is still uh, um, Optimus Prime. My prime is terrible. <laughs> Thank you for making it to the end of this video. You are fantastic. If you like this video, I've got another one up here. I've got a playlist down there that you can check out. And you can click on my icon to subscribe. Remember to ring the bell if you do subscribe. And I'll see you all in another video because Meister Man's got to be out. Peace.